Unity provides us with several options for moving around our scene view and focusing on assets in order to work on them. But after watching this video, I bet you'll think twice about how you perform this movement as this next tool, well, in my experience, has saved me a ton of time. Now I bet if you time the activity when developing a scene, most of it would be spent performing movement of the scene view camera. You know, focusing and getting the angles just right so you can work on that particular asset. Or pulling the camera out to see what's happening as your world comes to life as you press play on your game. And then putting the camera back when you stop and you need to get back to the asset. Well, this is where the scene view bookmarks tool comes in especially handy and a real time saver. With this tool, simply using a drop down overlay, you'll be able to select the scene view orientation. And with an assigned key, you'll be teleporting around your scene to work on that next part or view the whole world instantly. So how is this tool gonna work? Well, what you might not realize is that when you actually use the scene view, you're actually using a camera, just like you're using the main camera and all the rest. And as you're moving it around, you are changing the properties on that camera. So we can actually play off that by saving those properties and then putting them back in when we want to jump back to the bookmark. So let's jump into Visual Studio and I've created two menu items here, one to add a bookmark and one to switch between those bookmarks. And as you can see, I've also put a shortcut key there for the B key, just so I can actually press that and jump between them really quick without having to go to the tool menu. So what do we need to do to get the scene view camera? Well, if we look at scene view, the class, and we look at the last active scene view, this actually gives us the one we've been playing with. And then you can look at the properties here and you can see that we have things like the pivot and rotation and size and whether the camera is actually an orthographic view or not. And we want to record that and play that back. So I'm going to copy and paste because otherwise this code would take a long time to put down. And I'm just gonna take these four attributes, the ones that I have deemed necessary to record the actual camera view and put it back. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to record that. And as I just showed you, all we need to do is get the pivot, the rotation, the size and the orthographic to fill in those details. And then we'll just put those back in the same way. So if I save that and go back into Unity, so now let's say I wanted to record this particular position. I can come into tools and my bookmarks and press add. And that's added it into those static variables. Now, if I move all the way around here and I back out, all I need to do is go back into tools and then press switch and I back in that position. And just to check this shortcut key works, if I come up here and I press B, there we go, I'm right back to that position. So that's in essence how this bookmark tool works. In the next part of this video, we will save multiples of these bookmarks in a directory for our scene that we can switch between. But before we do, I expect the savvy developers out there are starting to see how this tool will be expanded upon in future videos with overlay interfaces, thumbnails, and plenty of management options. And I have good news for all out there who either don't want to wait, don't want to copy the code down that you see in the video, or want the fixes and improvements as I make them as I continue on these tools in the future. Well, I now have an asset store page where I'll be giving some of my tools away for free and some of them at a small price in order to support the channel and the creation of more tools and more of these videos. But if you're a struggling indie making every penny count, then you can still get all the information as the future videos become available. So everybody still wins. And if I can be so bold as to make a request that if you do download any of these assets, links in the description, you leave a good review for other developers out there. More reviews equals more sales equals more benefits for this channel. With all that said, let's jump back into making this tool dance. So with the power of editing, I've added two more classes, the directory and the bookmark. And let me just show you what those do. So let's jump in and we can see that the bookmark, all this is doing is this is becoming a storage for those items the ones we had here, the variables of pivot, rotate, size, and orthographic. And then we're also enabling the ability to create and to set the scene view orientation. So this is where we pass in the scene view as we did with the tool and we set it. And this is where we create it from the scene view. 
And this is just held as a struct and we've made it serializable because we're going to hold it in a directory, which is the next class. So the next class, as you can see here, has an array of bookmarks that I've exposed and it also has a scene GUID. And I'll explain that now. So when we create our directory, obviously the directory for bookmarks wants to be linked to the scene it comes from. And what you can do is you can actually take here the GUID, that is the asset of the scene, and we can set it in the directory. That means when we go to find a directory associated with our particular scene, we're not using naming. We're basically using the GUID, which means if we were to change the scene name, the bookmarks directory still links to that same scene. It doesn't link to some missing scene because it's using naming. Then what we do in the creation is we actually just take the name of the scene that we have and we append bookmarks.asset. And this will be placed right next to the actual, the scene that we're using, and it will be obvious what it's there. And then we make sure we create that asset. Because of course, if you go and create a scriptable object in a tool, and this is a scriptable object, by the way, the directory, if you go and create it with a tool, but you don't actually create it in the asset database, then all that's happening is you're creating an instance of it at that time and it'll be deleted when it goes and clears things up. So there we go. We're creating a scene GUID from the scene and we're basically storing that so we can do the comparison when we create. And here's the find method that I was just mentioning. And all this is doing is it's using the searchable find assets functionality from the asset database. And I've done plenty of videos on that, but all you need to know is T specifies that this is looking for the type of scene view bookmarks directory. And then what we do is we run through each of those that we find and we say, okay, does your GUID equal this GUID? Great, this is the directory that you're looking for. Now, the next ones are pretty obvious. It's get bookmarks. That's basically going into say, what index are you looking for? Great, I'll pass that back. And it passes a nullable scene view bookmark because it's a struct. Uh, just in case your code is wrong and you're passing in an index that's out of bounds, basically. And then all we do is we have the add bookmark because obviously we want to create them. And all this does is it spans the array or sets the first one in a new array and then tells the asset database, okay, this, book, this uh, directory is dirty, it needs to be saved. And that's all those two functions are doing. So now how do we relate that into our actual menu? So let's do that now. So let's get rid of this because obviously we're storing it in the bookmark now and we'll start filling in these details. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a bookmark. So we'll come in and we'll say, okay, I want to get the latest scene. If I can put an equals in properly. So we'll get the active scene and then we want to check whether that is actually the one that we're interested in. And we can do that using our new find method. And we'll send that the scene. Now we want to check whether this directory equals null, because if it does, well, we're adding a bookmark, we want to create one. And again, this is using this new functionality we've just put in called create. And again, you need to pass it the scene. Now, once we've either got the directory or we created the directory, we're going to need to add the bookmark. So we'll come in here and we'll use that static method on the bookmark for create from scene view. And then we'll pass it the, um, the scene view. Here we go, if I can spell it correctly. The last scene view we actually had. Okay, so that is our add. That will basically come in here and it will say, is there a directory? Great, if not, create. And once we're done, we'll add the bookmark to that directory. Next, we'll check for the switch. So we're going to do the same sort of thing here, but we're not actually going to need that because we're not going to create if it's not actually there. And we want to check if it's not null, because if it's not null, great, we're going to actually perform the switch itself. So let's get the bookmark that we're actually interested in. And obviously that's a nullable. And we're going to call this bookmark and we're going to get this from the directory and we're going to be interested in sending in an index. So how do we get that index? Well, we're going to store it. 
we're going to have a static int up here and this is going to be the bookmark index and we're going to pass that into here great stuff okay so that will get the bookmark that we're actually interested in and if that bookmark has a value then we had one and we're going to use that bookmark to set the scene view orientation and we're going to pass in the scene view last active scene view good stuff now this would always get the first bookmark so we're going to need to do some incrementing and we can do that just by going bookmark index oh, plus plus and we'll want to check whether that bookmark index is within our directory count because we added a count in there just to say you know are we within this if we're not drop down to zero so that would just circulate the bookmarks and that's everything for adding and switching but the real savvy people out there might be thinking well okay that's great your bookmark index goes to zero but if i was to change scenes if my bookmark index was on like 10 because i had 10 saved bookmarks then nothing would happen it would literally go to the next scene with number 10 and if that has no bookmarks you get the point you'll go out of bounds and suddenly you're looking at going back so what do we add i'm just going to copy and paste the code in here well we add this here and what this does is this attribute says that initialize on load so when we load unity we initialize this particular method and we're looking for when a scene is opened and you get the point when the scene is opened great set the bookmark index to zero so that means every time we change our scene we put the bookmark back so let's save that and jump back into unity so back in unity we now see we have our tools add switch and we can now start playing with our bookmarks so let's say we wanted to create our first bookmark here. We come in here and we say add. Now, as you can see, it suddenly created this asset here. And this asset is actually a scene view bookmarks directory asset. And you can actually see the bookmark it's set there. And if I move around and I say, okay, I want to have a shot that's far out. Again, I press add. You'll see it's added another element. And now what about switching? Well, now if I switch and I use the shortcut key from here on, suddenly I'm switching between the two of them. Let's take another scene. For instance, this car here. If I focus on this car, here we go. What I can do is I can say, okay, I want to add a bookmark there. And then I want to make sure that I have one on the side. There we go. And I want to add a bookmark there. And then we'll probably add one on the other side. And now my shortcut key will switch me between perspective view and then going into on the left and the right or the right and the left, either which way you look at it from the back or the front. So that's it for this video. If you've got anything out of it, then make sure to press the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, you can pick up this tool and others, including some freebies in my new asset store. And I'll leave all the links in the descriptions to go and get them. And of course, all the code is exposed. It has instructions and plenty of comments to help you along through the code itself. And let me know in the comments what other tools I've shown in the video series that I've created that you would like to see make it to the store with any sort of future improvements I've made since I've produced them in the video. And maybe the next video on screen that you're seeing now will be something that also needs publishing. So make sure to check it out.